Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Chad from Chad DIY and today I'm gonna to go through my entire laser cutter enclosure. Now in designing this enclosure, I wanted to tackle the three main issues I had with the diode laser. The first issue is the smoke that the laser cutter creates. Now at any laser cutter, you're actually burning the wood or it's creating smoke while you're cutting or engraving. So you want those fumes to be extracted out. So that was the number one feature I was looking for for an enclosure. The second thing I wanted to accomplish was I didn't want to have to worry about seeing that laser beam anymore. The laser beam you're not supposed to look at. They have shields, you wear goggles, which I do all that, but I still don't really want to see it. So that was another key feature of this enclosure is when I'm in my shop, things are running, I don't want to see that laser beam. And the third thing I wanted to accomplish was just keeping all the dust from a garage off of my laser cutters. So I do woodworking in here as well. So there's a lot of sawdust, all that kind of stuff. It's nice having a closure, kind of keeping them protected as well as I wanted it to be also uh, easy to use. You know, I didn't want to be a hassle like trying to make a cut or getting in and out of the enclosure. So these are all kind of factors I was thinking of uh, when I was building this thing. All right, first I'll give you the rundown of the box itself. What I used is basically two sheets of four by eight plywood, three quarter inch plywood. It's sanded on one side, I believe I used. Um, I also used a little bit of one by four material just for these doors, but basically the entire case is just two sheets of four by eight by three quarter inch plywood. And now the dimensions of the box, there's, it's seven feet long, it's 28 and a half inches deep, 19 and a half inches tall, I guess you would say, uh, not including the, the feet below. Um, and the reason I did that is because with the 28 and a half by 19 and a half, that's using uh, one sheet of plywood basically. So you, you make the cut, so you got 28, and then that equals uh, 28 and a half by 19 and a half, I believe that should equal 48 inches. So you have a width of a standard sheet of plywood. Another reason I came up with those measurements is the size of a standard diode laser cutter. Now, I think they're usually going by millimeters. The cutting size, uh, 400 by 400, I think is kind of standard in the industry, but I wanted to make sure that the, with the frame and everything, they would fit. Now, right now I have this Creality um, Falcon 2 laser. I think that had a, a little bit bigger cutting bed on it, so it's a, a little bit wider, but the 20 and a half inches, it still fits perfectly in there and you can shut the door. So you lose uh, three quarters of an inch when you shut the door on that. But so I kind of built it around the biggest cut, uh, laser cutter I had in my shop at the time here. Now that's kind of a quick rundown on the box itself. Now the doors themselves, as you can see, I, so I made it seven feet long. So I had a foot extra of plywood on the sheets. So I was able to have the plywood doors here. So basically those are one foot, one foot uh, tall. And then I just, to finish up, I had to use the one by fours for the, the top there. Really the only hardware that I included on the box itself were these uh, hinges. So I have six hinges, three uh, door poles here. So basically as simple as you can, can get on that. All right, the last thing of the box build is it is up higher. Now there's a few reasons for that. One is I like it up higher. It's just easier to work on. It's easier to get into it to use. Another reason is where the outlet location was on my workbench, I kind of wanted to lift it up so I could get, get access to the outlet without having to like cut a hole in the laser cutter enclosure itself, kind of raise it up. And another big uh, pro to this is I can store all my materials here. Now a future upgrade I could see is actually making uh, pull out drawers on this. I haven't done that yet, but still plenty of room to have all your material right below the enclosure itself. All right, so you might be wondering why I need it so big, why do I need the three bays? Uh, most people probably aren't gonna need three bays. They're probably not gonna have three dial laser cutters. I do, I do some testing on this channel. So it's nice to have that option to have three different uh, laser cutters all in one, one area. Now, oftentimes I will have the third bay empty right now. I have the MechPal that I tested uh, that laser. Basically, my main laser here is the D1 Pro, the Exil D1 Pro 20 watt laser. That's my daily driver. I highly recommend it, my favorite laser by far. So easy to use. I do have a promo code for that too. If you're interested in purchasing it, I will provide that in the link below. All right, now getting into really the number one reason why you'd build an enclosure for a dial laser like this is they're out in the open normally. So um, CO2 lasers, a lot of times they'll come with their enclosure already like built in so that they're, you can just vent it right from that. Dial lasers are not like that. They're just kind of open air lasers, which I mean, that has some pros as well, but for the most part, you kind of want to 
have them uh, in an enclosure to vent those fumes. And now I really struggled with my old enclosure, um, getting the fumes out. My biggest problem was I was using basically an oversized computer fan to do, to do that. That didn't work out great. So I went for a pretty big upgrade is now I have a, a six inch, basically specifically designed exhaust fan to get all those fumes out. Now I went with the six inch as opposed to the four inch just because I was doing the three bays. I don't know if it's entirely necessary to have that big a one if you're just doing a one or two bay. I think the four inch it would be great for that. This is actually, it's weird because I think the CFMs are double on the six inch from the four inch. So you'd think you'd have to go from four to eight to double it. It doesn't really work that way. Um, so the six inch is plenty powerful for this seven foot long enclosure. The brand I went with is a Vivo Sun. I believe that's how you pronounce it. I can provide that link down below as well. Um, and also I have this uh, six inch kind of flexible tubing headed out the window. Now this exhaust fan is variable speed. So I just kind of set up the control right here. If you can hear it turn on so you can kind of turn it up and down. I don't know how much less it really gets with the variable speed. It doesn't go down super low, but I usually actually run it at a lower setting. Um, that MacPaw laser at the end there that I use, when I have everything enclosed, the draw was uh, a little too much actually, and it was, it was cutting out the laser. I don't know if it had, I think it had some safety feature that triggered, maybe thought, thought something was going wrong. But so now I kind of keep some, the doors open for a little bit more flow going in so you don't have like a big suction box because um, it is pretty powerful, that, that blower. So here's my exhaust setup. I basically just have this flexible ducting head out the window. Um, I just have a slide window, so I open it up just um, as much as necessary, I guess. And so I kind of have some weather stripping. And I believe you can buy this adapter. Um, you can't really see it because it's in, in, or covered up. I just 3D printed this one. So basically it's just like a flat plate with the six inch hole that comes out. And then I attach this flexible duct. I'm pretty sure you can find that adapter somewhere. I have a 3D printer, so I kind of just uh, customized one myself. But uh, pretty, pretty basic setup for exhausting this thing out. And one final thing to mention about the exhausting system is I did uh, drill these four holes. I think they're two and a half inch holes. Probably drilled two more. Now eventually I'll have probably some screen kind of because they are open to the air. So dust and stuff can kind of migrate through there. But my issue was without those, um, when I turned that fan on, it was creating so much suction, like I mentioned before, it actually would stop one of the lasers. Um, so I kind of started with that. I usually now, mainly I use that X tool down in that first bay. So I'll just crack this far door too. I'll just have it open a little bit. Um, none, of the, none of the fumes have escaped through that because it's far enough away. So that's kind of one solution, but you, you are gonna want some I suppose it's sucking air, so you want fresh air to be able to come in here through ports like this. All right, the second issue I wanted this enclosure to solve was not having to worry about seeing the laser beam itself while things are cutting. So these types of lasers are bad for your eyes. You never want to look at them directly. They do come with shields around them to help. They also all include goggles, so you should wear your, or not goggles, just glass, safety glasses with a, a special coloring on them. Um, you always want to wear your glasses while you're cutting and well with the shield, but this way, since I have the plywood going up so, so high in just the plexiglass, you have to actually step by this and look down to see, see it cutting, which is fine. Well, that kind of makes it impossible for you to see the laser beam without at least the, the shield on the laser module itself covering your eyes. So this way when I'm just kind of walking about my shop and I kind of glance over if this was just on the open, it'd be really easy to kind of see it at that more level angle where you could actually see the beam without, I mean, you should always be wearing your safety glasses, but for whatever reason, if you weren't, um, this is kind of a dummy proof way of uh, keeping your eyes safe. Now one of the last goals of this enclosure is just kind of keeping all that dust and just workshop grime off these lasers themselves. And now one of the main components of that is doors. They, I got magnets on them so they stay shut. Um, they're not perfectly airtight so stuff can still get in them. I didn't think it was really necessary to be, have them um, completely airtight because you do want that fresh air going as the exhaust. Uh, hence why I drilled holes in the side of it. You know it's kind of counterproductive I felt like as I was drilling those holes to like create an enclosure and then make big holes but eventually I'll get screened but um, it does do a nice job I think overall of keeping that sawdust off of it.
Now for kind of the bonus of this enclosure is I wanted to make it an enjoyable experience, I guess, to make my cuts, to load these things, unload them, all that kind of stuff. Now I designed this in a way that I had my laptop on the right hand side while I'm working, while I'm setting up my cuts. And so now I have the doors opening where you can easily get into the machines. My old enclosure for a while there, I had the doors open the opposite way. So I would try to run a cut and then if I had to check them, I'd have to kind of go over and not a big deal, but all those little things really just kind of make the whole process more enjoyable. All right, another big perk of this enclosure is the lighting. So I added LED strip lighting all to the top. It's incredibly bright in here. I can see my work area very cleanly. My old enclosure is pretty dark. It was actually kind of hard to see sometimes where I'm cutting, where I'm lining things up. So the lights make a huge difference. Everything's kind of just plugged into that power strip. So I can, as soon as I turn that power strip on, the lights come on. I do have the, the ventilation, the exhaust fan. I do have that on a separate switch, so I can turn that on separately. And I do have um, an air, the air assist for the X tool is on a separate switch as well. So, so it doesn't, I just don't turn the power strip on and everything comes on. So I have a few things separated off like that, but the lighting is key. Another thing I did add to this is a custom USB plug. So it has two cables that come out. So I have two of my laser cutters plugged into that. They didn't have a three cable version or else I would have bought that, but it makes for a really clean adapter going into the side there. I can plug these into my laptop when I bring it out to run my cuts, but it just kind of makes it so much simpler than trying to just run cables to each machine each time. And this way, if I'm switch switching out machines too, it's really easy. Um, sometimes when I don't have that third bay, when I don't have a laser cutter in there, I just kind of store some stuff in there, uh, accessories, I guess. I got like a tumbler, rotary and stuff like that that I'll keep in there as well. So just another nice little convenience feature of making it just that much more simple to get a cut going. So if you do have any questions on this enclosure at all, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Just leave them in that comment section below. If you are interested in buying your first laser, I highly recommend that X tool on the end, my daily driver there. I'll provide that promo code in the link and you can save some money uh, if you wanted to pick one up yourself. So uh, as always, we'll see you on the next one.